Joining me now, Amy Holmes, Christopher Bedford, and Ford O'Connell. Uh, let me start with you, Chris. Uh, listen, President Trump laid it out there just like he laid it out there during the campaign, uh, 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 on the campaign season, rather. Uh, some people were hoping that maybe the inauguration would have more of an upbeat tone, but he was being realistic with the American people, perhaps something that D.C. is not accustomed to. They certainly weren't accustomed to it, and he, I was interested. We were sitting near the front row, and he went right after people in the front and people right behind him, which is not really common for an inauguration, and that was despite his aide saying he was going to have a slightly sunnier kind of Reagan-esque tone. This time they're saying that they, they mean it for real, and they're going to outlay not just the problems that they've laid out over the campaign trail, but they're going to lay out what they plan to do about them, uh, whether it's uh, taxes, whether it's fixing Obamacare, these are the things that they say they're going to focus, as well as uh, taking care of children at home, which may put them up for a clash with some of the more fiscally conservative or libertarian Republicans. Well, we know, uh, uh, Amy, that, that tomorrow it's going to be extraordinarily important because President Trump also has to veer a little bit to selling uh, these solutions because he, he's, he's, he's unorthodox. He's doing some things to Chris's point that some traditional conservatives are going to frown upon. Mm -hmm. He's doing some things that the Democrats aren't going to want to see happen, but He's, going to, he's rejiggering the whole way the thing works because right. it hasn't worked. Right. And when he's addressing Congress, he also needs to put some meat on those bones. How uh, much meat, though? I mean, this, that, that's they're the coming up with what they call the skinny budget. And, uh, right, you know, right. They're not going to give us everything, but right. more details than we've been getting. More details. And that is the challenge, of course, for these types of addresses to Congress, that they want enough of a roadmap, uh, of, a, you know, of a structure of where he's headed, what his agenda is. But they don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to be micromanaged. We've already heard from Sean Spicer, his uh, press secretary, that they intend to talk about where they've been and where they're going. I think the CPAC speech did give us a bit of a preview, particularly when uh, President Trump said that the core conviction of his movement is America first. And you also heard the president talk about the forgotten man and the forgotten woman. I think you're going to hear those themes. Uh, but again, they've already said that they plan at least tomorrow to lay out uh, their agenda in terms of tax policy, Obamacare, infrastructure. But again, that audience, and his audience is also all of America, but that audience there in the chamber, they're also going to want to hear some specifics. Well, uh, you know, of course, uh, Ford, he's met with uh, GOP leadership several times. He had governors at, at, at uh, Capitol, uh, at uh, White House today. It's, it's, it, I think what Amy is talking about, I think that is central, the idea that, hey, this is a new uh, form of conservatism that focuses on the American worker, the way we get there is through America first, and almost every single thing, I think, all roads have to lead back to that thing. Well, look, I've never been one to mince my words, so there's no need to start now. I'm going to lay it out for you right now. This will be one of the most important speeches of the Trump presidency. He has to instill in Congress the will to govern and to get things done. And that's not easy in a partisan, broken town like Washington, D.C. And no matter what he says, the Democrats are going to hem and haw. The question is going to be, does he connect with the American people with respect to his agenda, and they in turn light a fire under the backside of Congress to do the people's business. Because remember, if we look at that Harvard-Harris poll, 73% of voters say they want Democrats to work with President Trump. The key to Trump is to make sure that the American people know he has their best interests at heart. Amy? And just to give you a little bit of uh, you know, process, I know that gets a little boring, but I used to write State of the Senate speeches for Bill Frist when he was Senate Majority Leader. He delivered it the day after the State of the Union. And I can tell you that part of that process, and I would imagine the White House has been going through it the past few days, is actually working with Congressional leaders to discuss what should go in this address tomorrow. He also will have been consulting, I believe, if he's you know, following the process, uh, that he would have been consulting his cabinet members as well. What are their, you know, what is their agenda? What are their priorities? And how does he need to address it to get it done? The hardest thing about these speeches, and I think uh, you, we've been touching on it, is to make it thematic, make it hang together. You know, everything in the kitchen sink is so difficult. What are going to be the takeaways for the American people? America first, uh, and as President and Trump said at CPAC that he wants the GOP to become the party of the worker. Uh, Chris, uh, on that note, though, I, you know, I, I think what we're seeing with, with President Trump is a non-politician. Uh, and I think he's someone who's shown that he's willing to listen to everyone. He's invited everyone to the White House. Uh, and, and everyone's been grateful for that. But ultimately, 
he knows he's got to take this thing by the scruff of the neck because everyone's got different opinions. It's not even about bipartisanship. It's within the party, even within the Republican Party. A lot of confusion and everyone wants it their way. He's got to go in there and kick this thing and say, no, it can only be one way if it's going to be successful. Yeah, he definitely kind of maybe he might have expected that Republicans would have their game together when he came in and he could get started in the White House. And they showed that they didn't. And a lot of people on the Senate side and the Hill side and the House side thought that they weren't getting any air cover from the president. In the last 24, 48 hours and even more, you've seen Donald Trump hammering what his priorities are, whether it's tax reform. He's been hammering on Obamacare. He's going to start providing some air cover for the Republicans to deal with it. And one thing I also noticed about this coming speech that I think is worth watching is that Democrats haven't changed their strategy at all. So a lot of the guests that they've been touting as bringing are, are they're pretty much entirely immigrants or undocumented workers. And some of the responses are from a former Kentucky Democratic governor and from Nancy Pelosi, both of which are in their 70s. They haven't changed their game to say we are going to change and we're going to be about the American worker. Right. And Chris, they're doubling down. And Chris, the Democrats aren't going to change their game until Donald Trump can show he can get things done. What Donald Trump has realized is what Barack Obama realized, and there's only so much you can get done with executive orders. But again, if he gets the people on his side to light that fire under Congress, then he can move forward and do exactly what you're talking about. You know, guys, uh, right. to, you, to this point, uh, just an hour ago, Donald Trump tweeted, GOP now viewed more favorably than Dems in Trump era per that NBC Wall Street Journal poll. In other words, uh, he's been able to pull a very unpopular GOP Congress along his coattails. And I think he's not only reminding the world, Amy, he's reminding them, hey, guys, I got you here, so follow my lead. Right. I brought you to this dance. <laughs> so, yes, he's going to be wanting them to follow the lead. Uh, one quick thing that I'll be looking for tomorrow night, will Sheila Jackson Lee camp out on the aisle, as she always does, and try to get that photo up with Donald Trump as he enters the Is she the uh, one with the, the cowboy chamber? hat? No, not, she's not <laughs> yes. the one with the cowboy hat. And also, hat. I would say this for viewers, drinking game, how many times does President Trump say, believe me? Believe me, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, uh, Ford, will we believe him when it's all said and done? You think this is an extremely important speech. I think it's absolutely extremely important. And I think even when the speech is over, Donald Trump knows that that, that that doesn't end it. He's going to have to go on a road show and make sure the American people are part of this process, whether it's Obamacare, whether it's tax reform. This is only the beginning of a long, drawn-out war that which, he has Which, in to fact, he intends to do. It's been reported that he will be out on the road selling uh, his agenda that he lays out tomorrow well, night. Well, Donald Trump, very, un very comfortable on the road, Chris, so that's not going to be a problem. He's very comfortable in front of crowds. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll go into hostile territory, something he hasn't done since the election. But I will say this. We had a lot today from the White House, and, and we got a lot more hints with respect to Obamacare, that, that increase in defense spending. So lines are starting to be set up here. We're starting to see where the battle is going to be drawn. And it's going to take a sort of gut check, I think, uh, from the Republican side that we haven't seen in a long time. But they asked for this job, and they've gotten it. Yeah, and we're going to have to see where the fiscal conservatives, where Paul Ryan and them stand. Trump has come a little bit towards some of the House Republicans, the more fiscally conservative. He's willing to consider some of their tax plans. He's giving them more air cover. But at the end, they're going to have to bring out this policy. And what's disappointed, I think, a lot of the supporters of the Republicans is that they had six, seven years in the batting cages, and they never actually pulled together a solid group of plans. We, we've seen leaders in the GOP saying, well, we have to figure this out. And I'm thinking, we've seen your plan. You presented it to me two years ago. So they yeah. have to both work, and Donald Trump will need to sell it to the American people while the Republicans do the dirty work on the Hill.